This message is from our series, The Expect Effect. Pastor Michael explains what happens when we get the revelation of expectation. I'm so excited about this series that we're going into today. I want everybody to say the, this title with me. Say expect, expect. Uh, ex- effect. Okay. expect effect. Expect effect. Okay. Now, I begin to get this title almost, it probably was six to seven months ago, um, that I began to say, Lord, what do you want to talk about in 2016? He said, Michael, if you are going to see, he's talking to me personally, he said, if you're going to see the amazing things that I have for you in 2016, he said, it's not going to be able to happen without you expecting it. Many of us are living this case sera sera life. What that means is whatever will be, will be. We deal with circumstances, we deal with situations, but we don't expect for the great things that God has for us. And I begin to allow God to speak to me. I said, all right, God, it's, it's go time. See, when we talk about expecting something, this is a sermon series about faith and expectation. Somebody say faith, faith. and expectation. These two things are your key to everything you ever want to see. And many of us in different seasons have one or the other, but rarely do we have both working at the same time in our life. Many of us have faith to see something happen, but we don't expect it. Some of us have expectation for something, but we don't have faith to believe it. And so what we're going to do in the next five weeks, the entire time of January, we are about to go through a series that is about to empower you to a place that you have never been before. I am so pumped to teach this series. This is my thing. I couldn't sleep last night. I literally was rolling in my bed saying, faith, faith, expect effect, faith, expect. I woke up at one moment because I know this is about to unlock somebody's future. I literally got up at 5.45 before my alarm went off this morning, and I began to walk around my house and pray. I said, God, get them up. Get them here. Let them see it, because I'm telling you, today you're about to get a key that unlocks everything in your life. Hallelujah. Starts with the expect effect. So I'm going to give you a principle um, that we have here at Transformation Church. Um, it's what we call one of our culture codes. At Transformation Church, we have 12 um, principles that we call our culture codes, and it's the thing that dictates how we do what we do and why we do what we do. And one of those things is faith. And if you've never seen this culture code, you can look it up online and get all 12 of them, or you can get one of the magazines out there and get them. But I want you to know this because this is being a part of this local body. It's what we do. So this culture code of faith says this. We have faith in God. We have faith in people, and we have faith for miracles. I want everybody to say that with me. We have faith in God, we have faith in people, and we have faith for miracles. I want you to say it one more time. We have faith in God. Say it. We have faith in people. We have faith for miracles. This is how you have to live your life. Faith in God. Faith in people, faith for miracles. The reason that we set that as one of our culture codes at this church is because we are not going to see the amazing thing God wants to do in our lives if we don't have faith. And many of you, I can look at your faces, I can see your situations, I can look at your Instagram posts, and I can see that your faith has waned. Your faith is at a place where it's kind of low or no. You know how your, your car, if you have gas in it, but it's getting to that place where the gas is on empty, and some of y'all, y'all know how much further past E your car can actually go before it stops, and you praying, and you wishing, and it's putting, and that's where a lot of people's faith are right now. You can't believe God to go anywhere because you don't have the fuel of faith to get there. You can, you can want to see a destination, but the faith has not been filled up to the point where you can get to that place. And today you're coming to a filling station. And some of the faith that you've been lacking to take the step, some of the faith that you've been lacking to start the business, some of the faith that you've been lacking to, 
step away from situations. You're about to get it in this series. Because the eyes of your understanding are about to be open. And you're going to see that faith is the foundational thing that you need. We will have faith in God, faith in people, and faith for miracles. Somebody just needs to declare that one more time over their life for 2016. In 2016, I will have faith in God. Faith in people and faith for miracles. Some of y'all got the faith in God part, but the faith in people part. Now, they done hurt me too many times. Now, I've seen, I've seen how they act. Now, in this church, in my last church, I was all in. I was serving. I was doing everything, but I got hurt, so I'm going to stay in the back. God says that what's happened to you is not what's going to happen to you. And some of us in this room are cheating on our future with our past. Your future is the thing that God wants to take you to, but every time he tries to show you it, you look back to see what your past says. And so your future is always delayed by your past. It's time to let that go. This year, you're going to have faith in people. Well, pastor, I I don't want to be ignorant and go back into that same situation again. Baby girl, you so closed up right now. God could send the right person and you'd still say no. But it's time for our faith in people to be ignited. But that's only going to come through God. And faith for miracles. This is that thing that church people say, and it's a cliche, and people will live their whole Christian life and never see one miracle. Not me and not this church. When we read in the Bible of people's limbs going back, that Jesus touching people's eyes and their sight being restored, when we read about him needing resources to pay the government taxes, and he said, pick up that fish. It got the money in it, and he literally picks up something and pulls out money out of it. Why don't we see miracles like that today? Number one, because you don't expect it. Number two, Because you don't have faith to believe God can do it. What do you mean, pastor? That stuff don't happen no more. It's because you don't believe no more. Anywhere in the Bible where God healed somebody, the woman with the issue of blood, she literally had been to every doctor in the U.S., let's say. And nobody could heal her. But her faith and her expectation mixed to a place where she convinced herself. Nobody gave her a word. If I... Just press my way and touch the hem of his garment. I know, not I think, not it'd be nice. I know I would be healed. That woman crawled, scratched, tugged, pushed, bleeding the whole way. Uncomfortable, no pads or tampons. Going to the thing of God. Oh, I'm for real. Now get the picture in your head. You think you got a circumstance. She pressed her way, and at the moment her faith and expectation met, she was delivered, healed, and set free. She saw a miracle. It was, she was so cold with her faith and expectation that God wasn't even looking at her. And he said, oh, shoot, something just left me. He looked at his disciples and said, who touched me? And they were like, everybody's touching you, Jesus. You're a celebrity. We're in a mosh pit. He said, no. There's a lot of people around, but there's somebody with faith. There's a lot of people in this building. There's a lot of people that claim to follow me. They're following it, but there's somebody here with some faith. And they touched me with their faith and their expectation. See, I'm trying to get you to understand that there is nothing that you will ever see in this life that is too big for God to deliver into your hand. A healing, he can completely eradicate your body of any disease that it is filled with at this very moment. Any STD, any terminal disease, and no, I, I, any cancer. But see, we have more faith in what the doctor says than in the faith of what Jesus Christ did on the cross for us. And so what happens is faith works no matter what you put it in. When you apply your faith to a negative report, your faith begins to grow 
in the negative report. Some of you have heard all your life that you'll be broke, that you'll be on welfare, and then something happens to reinforce it and your faith gets strengthened in it. I thought I was going to school on a full ride. Now I got all these student loans. I got to my third year of my degree and now I had to drop out because I got pregnant. It just seems like I'm going to be in the system forever. It just seems like I'm a, the devil is a liar. I'm coming to declare to you that if you can get the faith the size of a mustard seed. Jesus said, I don't even need a lot of it. I just need you to have some and don't doubt that little bit. And if you can have that amount of faith, some of y'all are so scared to step out in business, like you even got something to lose. You, think about everything you got right now. Could you get that back in your lifetime? Yes. You ain't even got nothing. Oh, God, I just don't know. You, come on. Step out in faith. And believe God to give you ideas and put faith with your works and see something amazing happen. Stop sitting on what God has given you to show himself strong. I'm going to say it again because you missed it. Stop sitting on what God has given you to show himself strong. If you could do it in you, you would have done it. But he knows you're going to need him. Put your faith in him and he'll begin to show himself strong. Is that the person that used to work at Taco Bell that now owns three years later a multi-million dollar communication company? Yeah, and I don't even know how to work my cell phone. But I have not put, y'all don't hear me, but I have put my faith. We've stopped believing. We've, we've heard what, what has been presented to us and we take that as face value. And before we ever get to the expect effect, we have to have a foundation of faith. So today, before I go into the four weeks of the, the actual expect effect, next week I'm going to talk about expectation revelation. And how when you get an expectation and you get a revelation of it, it'll change everything in your life. But before I go there, I have to first make sure you have a foundation of faith. Because faith and expectation are the wings of the same bird. It's the wings, two different wings of the same plane. And what happens is many of us have taken flight with only one wing. We have a hope, we have a dream, and that's the body of the plane. And then we get our faith out there. I'm about to take off, and I'm going to see a whole new world. You, you get out there, you, you think you're going to fly, and you start speeding up, and you go. And what happens is because you don't really expect what you have faith for, it's a short flight to the ground. <laughs> then you get discouraged, and you hobble back, and many of our dreams and plans are sitting in hangars. They're sitting on runways. Waiting for somebody to come and fix us. May I submit to you that God, through his word and through revelation, is about to give some of y'all another wing today. That things you tried last year that, that literally weren't able to go because you just didn't have faith and expectation. He's about to give you both of them and literally it's going to be easy to fly this time. Because you're going to believe it. You're going to hope for it. And then you're going to expect it. Somebody say faith foundation. Okay, so I want everybody to just think for a second. Close your eyes. Just get focused on all the things you desire to happen in 2016. Come on, just think about it. Some of y'all want your homes paid off. Some of you want to prom be promoted on your job. Some of you want to walk free from an addiction. Come on, the things you desire, the things that you want in this year. Some of you want to get married. Some right now want to walk in abundance where they can bless other people, be generous. Okay, open your eyes. Now, I ask you what you desire. And we could have spent the next 30 minutes talking about what we desire. But now my question is, how many of you expect those things to happen? Now, after my pep talk, some of y'all are like, yes, Amen. But for many of us, that list would have gone down considerably because we want it to happen, 
We don't expect it to happen. We think thoughts like this. It'd be nice if it would. Man, that would be great, if it, but we don't expect it. And what God is telling all of us in this place that we have to go back to a place that all of us were at one time. You had a level of faith and expectancy that was outmatched to anything you've ever experienced as an adult. It was when you were a child. When you were a child, just go back with me for one second. Does anybody remember Christmas as a child? Or the day before your birthday when you was young? Before your dreams got shattered, before you knew how much stuff costs, before, you, you understand what I'm saying? Before your parents told you get a job, you understand what I'm saying? Before all of that, do you remember your birthday, your Christmas, and laying in your bed at night and so much exhilaration and, and anticipation for what was about to happen that you could barely sleep? You literally were looking at presents, trying to figure out what they were. You knew something amazing was going to happen to you the next day. You heard any noise and you'd wake up and start looking. You couldn't wait until you weren't even hungry the next day. It's like, we're going to eat breakfast. I'm not hungry. I just want to see what happened. That's expectation. And my question is, when's the last time we felt like that concerning anything that God promised us? When's the last time that we woke up and said, I can't do anything else except wait to see what God has for me in this day? That means we've lost our expectation. And God tells us this in Matthew 18, 3. He says, I tell you the truth. This is Jesus talking. Unless you turn from your sins and become like little children, you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. When he's saying that, he's not saying if you, if you don't um, um, turn from your sins and become immature. He says, if you don't become like little children in your faith and expectation, you'll never get all that I have for you. Why is it that when you were a baby believer, God sp spoke more than he does now and you've been saved for 10 years? It's because somewhere along the way we started believing doubt. We started, well, it didn't happen for them. The devil is a liar. That yes, there'll be times that because of God's sovereignness, some things won't happen in those season. That don't mean stop, don't stop believing. I think about my daughter, Isabella. She's two. And she believes everything her daddy says. I mean, li literally, if daddy says we're going to have a popsicle, she begins not only to believe it, but she goes and declares it to other people. Look what a child does. She says, Daddy, can I have a popsicle? Yes, baby, you can have a popsicle. Mommy, Daddy said I can have a popsicle. Noni, Daddy said I can have a popsicle. Nana, Daddy said I can have a popsicle. She hasn't seen it yet. And she doesn't even know where it's coming from. But she believes what daddy said. That's the level of faith we have to have when it comes to everything in our life. What has daddy promised you? He promised that I'd be the head and not the tail. Why are you the last on that job? Why are you always getting, no, 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 no. My daddy said that I would be the head. I'm coming for your job, boo. See, what you don't know is why you treat me wrong. You might want to treat me right because daddy called me the. There's no way I can stay at this place at this job because my daddy called me the head and not the tail. See, y'all playing. But we don't got faith like that. We'd rather just deal with the circumstance. We would rather crown our circumstance king and worship that. We'll bow and submit to our circumstance. Well, they did tell me this, and they did take that, and they did say I wasn't qualified enough, and they did say the devil is a liar. What did daddy say about you? What did God tell you? He said that you will be the lender. So how can you stay broke if daddy has promised you something else? The only way you can't receive a gift is if you deny it. And many of us have been denying what daddy's already said. I I'm here to encourage you, your faith and your expectation, that God wants you to take you, take you to a place individually that you will be able to stand 
and not declare the word, you will be able to stand and you will be living the word. I, I, no, I want everybody to hear me. I want people to look at my life and see the scriptures walking in a six foot two um, suit and be able to say, that's a man that's blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when he comes, blessed when he goes. Oh, that's what it looks like. That's a family that says that as for him and his house, we will serve the Lord. That's a man that will stand and say his children's children will stand up and call them blessed. Oh, that man is walking with the Proverbs 31 woman. Do, do you understand? I don't want to have to tell him the scriptures. Look at my life. Watch me, watch me, ooh, watch me. Do you understand what I'm saying? I want them to be able to watch me. But that only happens when our faith can take us to a place that we really believe God. Church, I want you to understand that if you don't have a foundation of faith, nothing else you receive will be able to last. I, I, I want to... Make this very plain. Faith is the most fundamental thing of your Christian life, and it is the most important thing that you need to invest in. You need to invest in your faith. I'm going to say it again. You need to invest in your faith intentionally. What do you mean, Pastor Mike? You have to put things in your view, in your hearing, in your atmosphere, that encourage you to see beyond what you see right now. Hear me. If you do not, you will be at the same place for a very long time, yeah. mad at God because he didn't move. But God says, I'm sitting here with everything you need. I'm just looking for the faith to pay for it. Money doesn't move God. Faith moves God. So God showed me an illustration. He said, Michael, everything you need is behind my back. All I'm asking for, just for the sake of the analogy, is $30 worth of faith. Well, God, I only have $3 worth of faith. And it was enough to get me saved. And I haven't done anything with this $3 of faith. I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. But I'm not seeing miracles. I'm not seeing anything. And God says, if you just get around the right people and the right atmosphere, every time you open the word, you get an, another dollar of faith. See, see, you missed it. The reason why some of you are so low in your faith is because you get paid every time in faith, every time you open the Bible. If you knew you was getting $10 every time you read the word, some of y'all be reading the word all the time. Some of y'all, what I'm saying is you're getting faith every time you read the word. And God's saying, I got a whole business for you, but you got to get your faith up. Will you be able to pay for with faith, not money, not experience, not, not qualification with faith? What I have for you. So our foundation of faith has to be the bedrock which everything is laid on. So I'm just going to talk to you a few scriptures. I want to give you an equation, and I want you to write this down because you'll see it work in this entire series. Faith plus expectation equals miracles. I want you to write it down just like it would be an equation. Faith plus expectation equals miracles. This can be applied in every area of your life. If you get faith in something, and then you get an expectation with it, it will end up and result in miracles in your life. This is the key to your whole 2016. Pastor, I don't understand. Well, I'm going to break it all the way down for you. If you can begin to get a visual of what God wants for you or what you even desire, this is the beautiful thing about faith, is faith don't even have to have permission for God. It's a principle in the world. I, some of y'all just got scared of that. There are people that do not serve God who have faith in something. Oh, you, you playing. They have faith in something enough to put an expectation with it, and it turns into Facebook. Something that wasn't seen. He called those things that were non-existent. 
And he put an expectation in the next five years, everybody will use my stuff. Now a miracle is happening. That baby, the church, everybody begging that baby for money. Why? Because a miracle happened when he put faith and expectation together. I want you to see that believers get an added bonus that when we put faith and expectation together, then God gives us supernatural insight to stuff we can't see with our natural eyes. You'll walk into a business meeting and God will say, this ain't the one. Won't even say a word. And they say, we're excited about doing business with you. And you say, you know what? I have to leave. We're not even going to see you get you get CIA agent Holy Spirit on your side. And so what ends up happening is you get to mix faith, expectation and foresight. See, when you're not saved, you got to run into every wall. When you are saved, the word says that good step, the, the steps of a good man are move to the left. Move, leave that job. Take that job. They get ordered. And so what your faith does is it starts to produce a life that you get to reap the benefits of living a saved life. See, miracles happen. Be an example for God. And you get to do it while looking good. Look at you. I, I'm trying to help somebody see that faith plus expectation equals miracles. Now, let me bring this clarity to you. Faith and expectation are not the same thing. But they were always meant to go together. They, they were meant to go together like peanut butter and jelly. You understand? Like Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. They were meant to be together. Like Jasmine and Aladdin. They were meant to be together like Sriracha and anything else. <laughs> Maybe that last one was for me. But they were meant to be together. Okay? So, I want to talk about expectation real bad. The Holy Spirit rang me back. He said, tell them about the faith foundation. So I'm going to give you six things about faith that you need to know as we move in this series. Number one, faith in God comes first. Faith in God comes first. If you don't believe that it's the will of God for you to be healed, delivered, walk in abundance, be set free, you won't expect God to heal you, deliver you. And set you free. You won't expect it. If you don't believe that God can, you don't believe that he will. Point blank period. Let me give you another analogy. You never expect anything from somebody you don't believe in. If you have a deadbeat dad, okay, and he says, I'm going to be here on Saturday, and I'm going to take your family is separated, and you said, I'm going to be here on Saturday, and Saturday comes, and they're not there. The first time you're like, okay. Well, maybe he'll come next week. Next Saturday, I'll be there. Next Saturday comes, he won't be there. And so then you just give up. And then by the time you're 18, then they want to make another charge back into your life. And at that point, you say, I'm coming to, to give you um, your graduation gift. And in your mind, you're like, graduation gift? <laughs> I don't expect anything from somebody I don't believe in. That's why we have to make sure that our faith is really in God. Not this churchy, religious, I believe you, God. I'm talking about in your heart. Because until you believe him, you can't expect nothing from him. When a situation and a circumstance happens, you don't turn to God. You turn into whatever that you believe in. That's why believers can come to church, but they get in a tight situation. They believe in alcohol more than they believe in God. So they expect that the alcohol will relieve their pain instead of God giving them peace. So they turn to the alcohol. Does, does everybody? That's why we have to have a faith foundation. That's why you think that your relationship with God um, is, is, is just a good relationship to have. It's the relationship to have because everything you need is found in God. But what we do in this earth suit is we walk around and we try to feel God holds only places that he can feel with things that feel good for a moment. But they never last us. And so what happens is it begins to wear on our faith. And so we stop believing in God. We start believing in other things. And we still left empty at the end of the day. How many people have tried it your way and still felt empty at the end of the day? Here's what I'm saying to you. If you don't have faith in God first, you won't expect God to do anything for you. Does everybody understand that? Go to um, Mark eleven twenty two. And I want you to see this because 
it's funny because this is how we do a lot of time. Let me set the backstory. Um, Jesus and his disciples are, are leaving a city and going into another city. And Jesus was hungry. And this just makes me excited. I say this every time I talk about this scripture because it just lets you know the humanness of Jesus. Jesus is like, man, I am hungry and there is no McDonald's around anywhere this mug. I want a McDouble's uh, and I don't, I can't find one. And so what he says is he walks up to this fig tree and he was like, okay, I'm gonna get me some figs off this tree. And the fig tree was not producing fruit. And Jesus said, oh, no. You can't be called a fig tree and not produce no fruit. He said, I curse you, fig tree. You will never, ever produce any more fruit, wither up and die. And this was on a Tuesday, and he walked into the city. On Wednesday, he came back, and they was just walking past because they were going on their journey. And Peter said, Rabbi, what? Yo, yo, check this out. Yo, 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 yo. Jesus. This fig tree actually died. And then Jesus looked at Peter like he looks at many of us when we find out his word is true. (laughs) You're, You're shocked that what I said I did? And this is where we pick up on the conversation. Mark 22 verse, uh, Mark 11 verse 22. It, it said, then Jesus said to the disciple, look at this, have faith in God. This is first. The first thing he says to them is have faith in God. He said, I tell you the truth. And this is God speaking to you. You can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen. But you must really believe it will happen and have no dark doubt in your heart. I tell you, you can pray for anything. Did it say something? Anything. You can pray for anything. And if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. But when you are praying, first forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. What Jesus is saying to us is, I'm always going to do what I said I'm going to do. All you got to do is have faith in God. Believe and don't doubt. See, this is the thing that I have been, um, I'm going to say obsessing over, but continually bringing before the Lord. Because I know this is the key to everything that God wants to do in my life. If I just believe him and don't doubt, there is nothing impossible for God. And so many of you. This word is having to wash over you because I'm coming against years of disappointment. I'm coming against years of of broken promises. I'm coming against years of you stepping out and feeling like nobody was with you. Listen, this faith walk, I do this alone. Me and Natalie have been believing God for things that people our age and people that have our qualification haven't believed for in years. And let me tell you what God has done for me. He said, because of your audacious faith to believe, I'll take you to places people can't even think of. This is not a group decision. Can I just be real with you? If y'all don't get this, I don't care. Because my faith is that God, as I put my trust and my belief in him for me and my household, he's going to raise us up to a place that will be able to be said that nobody gets the glory except God. Do you know that this is where hating comes in the church? Because some of y'all just got mad when I said that right there. How to pass up? Go stand out there outside that he don't care. Listen, Buki, because you... <laughs> Hear me, because you don't want this. It's available to you, but you're going to have to sacrifice something to get it. It's available to every one of us, but our faith in God comes first. Everybody say first. First. And then Paul gives us more insight to this in 2 Corinthians 5, chapter 5, verses 6 and 7. It says, and, and this is how we know that we have to have faith in God but not just for heaven. We have to have faith in God on this earth, okay? So many people just trying to make it to heaven. We're going to be there for all of eternity. (laughs) Guys, there's no rush for that. We're going to be there, but enjoy life. 
I'm not talking the world standards of enjoying life. I, I'm talking about the life that God tells us that he said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly, that the fruits of the Spirit would abound in your life, that you would walk in joy, love, peace, kindness. Those are the things that will allow you to joy. Like, listen, heaven's coming. And if you want to go, okay. You know, Mary Mary had, I want to go to heaven. I skip that song every time. On the, I'm, not, I'm not ready yet. I want to see my kids. You understand what I'm saying? I want to I see some things. When, if he comes, I'm ready. But I'm, okay, anyway. And many believers, oh, the world is going down. The world is going to hell in a handbasket. You ain't doing nothing to change it. God sent us here to be ambassadors of heaven. We're supposed to be reflecting what's happening up there here on earth. And you're trying to get there, and he's saying, I need you down there. Okay. So this scripture, Paul tells us that we're supposed to trust in God and walk in faith on this earth. 2 Corinthians 5. Verses 6 and 7, it says, so we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, in the body, we are absent from the Lord. So we're not in heaven, we're on earth. Now, what does it tell us to do on earth? For we walk by faith and not by sight. Paul is trying to give us a key of how to live this life. You don't live it by sight, you live it by faith. Can I, can I help you? Let me, let me paint a picture for you. When you see how you walk naturally is you see where you want to go and you begin to move that way. That's how we naturally walk. We see if there's, if there's an obstruction in the way, we see it and we move there and then we walk where we want to go. Paul is saying in the spiritual on this earth, we don't use how we see, we use our faith. So we faith where we want to go. And walk that way. My natural sight will tell me one thing, but my faith tells me another thing. So I got a doctor's report that said I have a chronic disease, but my faith says that I am healed, delivered, and set free. So I do not walk by this doctor's report. I walk by faith, and I head that way. See, the problem with most of us is that we would rather believe what we see than what our faith says. And so we walk by what we see. See, the thing is, when a situation arises in your life, you're supposed to respond first with faith, not fear. If, if they call you right now, as soon as you get out of church, we are sorry to tell you this, Mr. Johnson, but you have lost your job. Some of y'all just right there, if your last name is Johnson, your heart started beating fast. <laughs> Because automatically we start to think what that means for what we see. Our house, kids, tell God I know I have a family. I was about to pay off this loan. Da -da 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 -da. At the moment tribulation comes to me, you say, What? Who did what? They taking what? Cool. God. I remember your promise to me. And you said there would be no thing in this world that I would have to lack because I trust you and I honor you. So I know what I see, but my faith sees me whole, prosperous, and walking in abundance. So I'm going to make this next step not in fear, but in faith. So I'm going to face my way into this next move. And I'm going to see it. Y'all better not mess with me because I'll faith my way into a promotion. I'll faith my way into a new home. See, what you don't understand is you're waiting for your money to line up and God is waiting for your faith to line up. Hear what I'm saying. The relationship you're looking for is not going to come by just you going to counseling. Your faith has to begin to believe that God is about to move on this situation. I'm telling you that you got to faith your way into some situations. That's why, you, that's why your faith in God has to come first. Can I tell you a real life story? God began to show me. He said, Michael, because I used to, when I was, he, God worked this in me at a very young age. I've been believing God big for a long time. Like, I can remember when I was eight and nine, 
believing for stuff that was just stupid. No, no am I telling the truth? I always. I, at 14 years old, I got a dream that I wanted a brand new drum set. And boy, I, you know, I could have had any type of drum set, but I wanted a custom made. Now, I'm 15 with no job. Some of y'all just, y'all tell your kids, shut up and sit down. <laughs> but I'm thankful for my parents because they never crushed my dream. Ne not one time. I'm thinking about it. There is nothing that I ever said that they said that's impossible. Parents, hear me. Don't crush your kid's dream because you didn't have the faith to believe it. No, hear me. Don't, don't, don't diminish what God's trying to birth in them. And actually, it was supposed to happen three generations ago, but they got it because everybody passed it up. Don't crush in them what God's trying to build. I begin to believe God at 15 years old for a drum set, and I didn't have money. This drum set cost $10,000. 15. I just want you to put the equation together. 15, Davey, I'm willing to $10,000 drum set. And he said, well, believe God, son. That's all the license I needed. So word tells us that faith without works is what? Dead. I ain't had no money. Couldn't get a job. So what did I do? I drew the drum set. I took 10 days to get a protractor. Y'all remember what a protractor is? I got a protractor out, a ruler, shading pencils, and I can't draw. <laughs> no, I'm serious. And I had one sheet of paper, good erasers, and I spent time drawing every detail of that drum set. And I hung it up in my, in my room. And I told everybody, uh, uh, some people who went to school with me, I had it in my binder as a picture. People would literally be looking at my binder, my folder, and they'd be like, what is that? I said, that's the drum set I'm about to get. And see, some of y'all so confused right now. Kids like, that is too much work. A drum set? You don't have to be in my faith, okay? <laughs> Th this ain't about you, boo. But this is what, he said if I asked for anything, I want you to bring this down to the most basic, a drum set. Do I need a drum set to be saved? No, but I wanted it. See, God is not interested in just meeting your needs. He wants to give you the desires of your heart. But you scared to dream. You scared to ask God for anything other than your bills being paid. Ah, Lord, help my spirit, Jesus. Help me. I'm sick of seeing the church so oppressed and depressed over some whack little bougie, uh, just blood, just leave my dad. He didn't call us to be poor. He called us to reach the poor and help the poor. But it's going to take your faith going to another level. I begin to draw that thing. I put it on display. I told people, listen, I had enough faith to ask people for money. I'm 15 years old walking around for my birthday. Don't give me nothing. Just give towards my drum set. I had friends at school giving to my drum set back then. I was still, you know, a little player player, so I would be talking to the girls like, girl, this drum set. <laughs> this drum set, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get it to be able to play. And I had them giving me a little lunch money. I didn't care. God was still working on me, you understand? But listen, he don't even work through your stuff if he sees faith. <sighs> Y'all, long story short, the drum set that you saw me play for the little drummer boy, that was the drum set that I got on my 16th birthday. That was my faith in action. Now hear what I'm saying to you. It didn't come just because I wanted it. It came because I believed. And I had faith that would believe in God first. I knew if it was going to happen, God had to do it. Even if he was going to use my parents. See, some of us act like it's not God because you see who it's coming from. Tommy and Brenda did not have 8,000 extra dollars sitting around. My faith attracted money to their account. You missed it. See, you think it's them, but it's my faith bringing money to a conduit to get me what I need. 
I'm telling you, believe in your faith. God will attract money to the business so you can get the raise that you need. Yeah. Ow! God will use anything to meet his children at the level of their faith. He'll use anything. Okay? So I want you to know that your faith in God is first. Go to Hebrews 11.1. 1. This is a familiar passage to everybody. But, but I'm about to hope to give some revelation, some revealed truth in it right now. Um, it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay? Now, that just what happened is how I hear it every time. I say, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. My mama said, uh-huh. It's the evidence of things not seen. And what happens is that's what it becomes in our mind is a cliche. It, became, it becomes something that we've heard and we realize, but it's become powerless over time because we don't really know what it means. So I'm going to take those two things and show you what faith is. Point number two, we, we, we have point number one was faith um, and God comes first. Point number two, faith is a result of hope. It says, now faith is the substance. It's a matter. It's a thing um, that comes from you hoping for something. My question is, what are you hoping for? What are you desiring? What are you anticipating in this year? The sad thing about it is, most of us have stopped hoping for God to do something. We'll take whatever you got, God. Just let us get through the year. And he's saying, once you realize your faith in God is solidified, now start hoping for something. Hope that your house gets paid off this year. For some of y'all, when I said that, you'd be like, uh-uh, I'm only in the second year of that. Fine. Take the 30 years. <laughs> that, that don't bother God, but he has access for you to get something different. See, he is asking us to start hoping for things. Today, prophetically, I'm taking the limit off of your hope. I believe by the Spirit that you're going to begin to see things in your dreams. You're going to begin to see things that you desire. And you're going to begin to, everybody say, hope. hope. If you don't hope for the business to be successful, if you don't hope for multiple locations, if you don't hope, no, it ain't happened yet, but that don't stop me from hoping. But some of us are so fear, fearful and we're fear, um, fearful of failure and we're so concerned about what people think of us that it will cut us from hoping. And God says your hope, your faith is a product of your hope. The reason you ain't got more faith because you ain't hoping for nothing. That's what the scripture says. Faith is the substance, the byproduct of things that you're hoping for. God, why is my faith so low? Because you're not hoping for anything. And I release you to begin to desire. I release you to begin to hope for things. Well, what if it doesn't happen? What if it does? <laughs> well, what if, it do what if it doesn't manifest it the way it, I want it to? What if it does manifest the way you exactly you want, way you want it to? I, listen, my thing is in God, my hope is in him. That's what the word tells us, that we put our hope in God. And so once we do that, we can begin to hope for other things. We can hope that our attitudes change. I've been this way for 15 years, but you can hope to change it. And this is what I want to let everybody know is that your faith then begins to increase because it's the byproduct of you hoping for something. Look at 1 Peter 1.3. It says, praise be to God, our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope. God wants your hope living again. I literally see, you know when somebody's dead and then they, they bring the ambulance and they rub the things together and they say, clear! Poof. That's what God is doing to some of your hope this morning. He's waking it up. Hope for the things that seem impossible. Hope for the things that are out of your reach. Think big. Everybody say, think big. Stop thinking small. That's why when I talk about this church, I'm hoping that the doors blow off of this place with people. 
Look at <laughs> yeah, Amen. <laughs> yeah. I don't care. Because as a visionary of this house, God gave me faith and hope to believe for something. I believe, I am com- fully convinced that this church will have double by this time next year. Thank you for the four people of faith. Here, but this is the great thing about faith and hope, that all of that can work just on my hope and my faith. I don't need your agreement. I've got enough to believe that God can do what he said he would do because he said it to me and I have faith to believe it. Stop looking for agreement and look for faith. I want somebody to see that your hope will produce faith in your life. Look at Romans 8, 24, 25. It says we are given this hope. When we were saved, you got it when you got saved. You got living hope when you got saved. Now watch how dope this is, NLT version. It says, if we already have something, we don't need to hope for it. How many of y'all in the car that you're driving and be like, I hope for this car that I'm driving? You're always hoping for the newer year, the better mileage, the better. Do you understand what I'm saying? Look, the word knows everything. It says, but if we look forward to something we don't yet have, It gives us criteria of how we hope we wait patiently and confidently. See, these are two things that really become the the testing of our faith. Either we wait patiently, but we start getting doubtful, or we wait confidently and we want it to happen right now. And God says, I'm going to give you two things that going to kind of work um, um, against each other, but they're going to work for your good. I need you to wait patiently, so that means it may take some time, but I need you to be confident the whole time you wait. That's why your hope is so important. Last one that I love, Romans 12, 12, it says rejoicing in hope. See, remember, hope produces faith. Patient in tribulation, there are going to be some trials, but be patient in them, and continually, steadfastly in prayer. That's what we're doing in this 21 days of fasting and praying. Tomorrow, I want you to come hoping for something. I, I don't want you to push away your plate and, and come for prayer on a whim. You better have some specific hopes. I'm believing that my business will trip. I'm believing that my son or daughter that's far from God is coming back to Christ. I believe you better see some of us. We, we try to give God room. So in case he doesn't do it how we think that he's still God. Oh, y'all know the prayers I'm talking about. God, just change my situation and make it better. However you want to do that. God says to come to his throne of grace boldly. I'm specific. God, I need a $20,000 increase in my income this year. And I'm hoping for it. Look, some of y'all, oh, my God, I will never come to God like that. You'll never have it. Never will have it. I'm trying to encourage you that God is not intimidated by your prayers. He's not intimidated by your plans. He's not intimidated by the dreams he placed in your heart. When he told Noah, build the ark, I bet Noah was like, okay, I'll build a little boat. And he started seeing the supplies come, and he started to say, hold on, this plan is bigger than what I thought. He said, yeah, because you got to put two of every animal on this mug. What I'm thinking is way bigger than what you're thinking. And what God is saying to us today, I need you to start thinking big, because then that's when I get to come in. Because I want to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask or think or even of. But if you don't take the limits off of your thinking and of your hoping, you cap God and you just get the bare minimum of what he's given you in this Christian life. Okay? So so we know that faith is the result of our hope. Point three, it says in that scripture, it says, it's the evidence of things not seen. Point number three. Faith is evidence of my future. Faith is evidence of my future. Can I break it down for you? Um, Faith, anytime you need evidence, they ask for evidence when you need proof. If you're in a court case, they say, um, is there any evidence? They're saying, is there any proof that this is happening? This is the beautiful thing about God, that he gives us something that we can obtain at any place in any state in our life 
and we don't have to have education to do it. We don't have to have a certain amount of money. We don't have to be married into a certain family. We don't have to have this status or not status. We don't have to have anything. All we have to do is believe. And God says that your faith is proof of things that are not yet seen. So when you get faith, you get proof that something is happening in my future that's not in my hand. I, I'm going to show you this again. When I had faith to believe for that drum set, I saw it before I saw it. Okay? It's, it's, it's the thing that I saw in the spirit, in my imagination, and in my thoughts before I ever laid hands on it. And what happened is, because I had faith in that moment, it was proof to me, not to everybody. It was proof to me and God. Me and God knew that we had a transaction on the way. He knew that everything in the cosmos was beginning to line up around my faith, and it was being attracted to me because I had faith. He said, that's your receipt, son. Let me give you an example. Faith is like the receipt for an online order. Some of y'all shop online. If you don't, you need to. Okay. I hoped for a pair of shoes. I got in the atmosphere where I could find them. I put my faith and works together and purchased them. And I get faith as a receipt. It's not yet in my hand, but I know it's on the way. That's what your faith does for you. It proves, you know what, I don't see this situation changing, but I have faith. And so that's proof that my future is different than what I see right now. Yeah. I want everybody to understand that as you walk in your faith, if you increase your faith, it gives you hope for the future. Your hope is encouraged. Your future is encouraged. That's how you can walk through a situation right now and still be smiling because I know where my faith is. It's not in what I'm seeing. It's not in what I've experienced. It's in what I know I've already purchased by this faith. And it's coming to pass for me. Amen. Fourth point, faith pleases God. Hebrews 11:6 it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Do you even think that he'll reward you if you'll seek him? That's the faith that has to come from this. And you say it's impossible to please God? Yeah. Why? Because faith is in his DNA. It is a core characteristic of who God is. And so that's why it has to be a core characteristic of who we are. Hebrews 11.3, it says, by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed. He made everything by faith. And it was by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. I want you to understand how big Faith is to God. It's the whole thing. Galatians 2.20. Some of you know this. I'm just giving you scriptures to build your faith. It says I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ in me that lives. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith. In the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Ephesians 6.16. It says above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. 1 Timothy 4.12, one of my favorite ones. And this is for all the young people in the house. It said, let no one despise your youth, but be an example to all believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. Those are the areas that the enemy attacks our generation the most. I want you to look at those. He makes sure that we talk in crazy. He makes sure that our conduct is, is iffy. He makes sure that we love people conditionally. He makes sure that our spirit man is dead. He makes sure that our faith is low and that our purity is non-existent. It's time to reverse that. Faith is important. Everybody gets that now. And for us to expect something, we have to have faith. So how do I increase my faith, Pastor Mike? I'm glad you asked. My fifth point, faith grows by the word. What happened to you in this place today is your faith grew. What happens to you when you get in your Bible tonight and tomorrow on this fast, your faith is going to grow. 
what happens when you go to our podcast and listen to the messages or you listen to other preachers and other things. Your faith begins to grow by the word. Romans 10, 17, it says, so then faith, this is another formula. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Church, it's a big topic, but it's a very simple answer. Read your Bible. B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. Stand up on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. If we looked at your life, do you do it? Is that what's actually happening? Is it I stand up on the word of God? You only can stand on something if, if it's a foundation in your life. You got to read the Bible. Some of y'all are leaders and don't read the Bible. You got enough scripture. I got enough scripture. You better get in that word again. It's life. Right. It's revelation. Well, I used to, but in my schedule, I'm busy now. Make time. Do you know I took all the, I timed myself on all the time I spent scrolling in a day and it was over three hours. All the time I spent texting, scrolling up Facebook and Instagram. It, it, it's a test yourself. See how much time you're looking at people say, praise the Lord on the Instagram, me with my cousin, all those other things. Your faith is not growing at all. D does everybody understand? And so then when God tries to get you to believe for something, there's nothing to pull on. Okay, you got to read your word. And can I submit this to you? That faith works in reverse too. So faith comes by hearing and it's giving you the right answer to the test. You need to hear the word of God. But faith also comes by whatever you hear. Watch. So if you are hearing things about lack, poverty, and, 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 and just being broke, your faith will increase in those things. That's right. If you're hearing faith, come by hearing. If you're hearing things about lust and perversion and you listen to Chris Brown all day and you and Trey songs is, the, is, is what you're going for. Teddy Pendergrass, whatever you want to listen to. Some of you are like, that ain't me. OK, we'll go earth and fire on you. If you're allowing those things to continue to permeate in your mind, faith come by what are you listening to? What are you allowing into your gates? Some of y'all have more faith in what Cookie and, and Lucius Lion do on Empire than you do on what the Word of God does. They're building a kingdom that was made up, and he's building a kingdom that's everlasting. I'm not coming against you for watching that, but what I'm saying is, is your faith stronger in that than it is in this? Some people had a conniption when they canceled one, series, one show. They canceled a show for the World Series, and people's like, ah, you cannot come to church for a year and be okay. What's your faith in? See, faith comes by hearing, and it's giving you the right answer, hearing the word of God. Last thing, faith is priceless. I, I want you to hear me say this so clearly, that you have to start investing in your faith and get a foundation of faith that's strong. Because it's priceless. I want you to look at this scripture in 1 Peter. It's chapter 1, verses 4 through 9. And it says, and we have a priceless inheritance. Inheritance that is kept in heaven for you. Pure and undefiled. Beyond the reach of change and decay. And through your faith. God is protecting you by his power. Until you receive this salvation, which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. Verse 6. So be truly glad. There is a wonderful joy ahead. Even though you must endure many trials for a little while. Many trials for a little while. Many trials for a little while. Many trials for a little. I want to say that that's part of the plan. Many trials for a little while. Some of y'all should be encouraged and take joy because it's almost over. It's many trials. That 2015, some of us had a lot of trials, but it was many trials for a little while. I want everybody to see that. Why? These trials will show that your faith. Mm, mm, mm. Don't you love the word of God? So this is happening to me on purpose. This is not just. 
so that I can suffer and go. No, no, no. It's just trying to make sure that your faith is genuine, that when you lift your hands in the presence of God and say, God, you're all I need. That's not a cliche. That's what you truly mean. When it say, Father God, I don't care who leaves me. If I walk through the valley, you are there. If I'm on the mountaintop, you are there. He's just trying to make sure when you say what you say, what you post is genuine. So many trials for a little while. Does everybody get it? It's on purpose. He says, so your faith will be genuine. He said, it's being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Watch this. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong, remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor. See, those are the things that, that we really want to see. It'll mean bring much praise, glory, and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. It's time for us to invest in our faith because it's priceless. The effect to expect, it can't start in your life until you have a foundation of faith. Next week, I'm going to talk about what expectation will do, what it will bring, what comes. I I'm so excited to give you this, but if you don't ask God, give me a fresh revelation of having faith in you then everything you built will be built on sand and you'll be frustrated. The thing that I'm finding about a lot of Christians is they were taught wrong and so they'll do one step without the other and they'll be like, what happened? But you can't bake cake without mixing the ingredients. If you just put the ingredients in a, in a pan and put it in the oven, it's not gonna come out like the picture. And what happens is many times we miss steps and what's happening, then we get frustrated and we're like, forget it. But I'm trying to give you step by step, line upon line, precept on precept. How are you gonna get to the miracle part? First, you have to have faith. Cause once you get faith, then you get expectation. It's going to produce miracles in your life. Right now, I want you to put your Bibles down. And I just want everybody to close your eyes just for a second. And we're going to do as we do at the end of every service. If you're watching online, we want you to do this as well. I want you to just close your eyes, not in a religious act, but we just want to ask the Holy Spirit, what are you trying to say to me in this message? Come on, you ask him right now. God, what are you trying to say to me? And then actually listen to him. Because I believe God is trying to speak to each one of us individually. We know that there's areas in our life that we need more faith. We need our faith in God to be first. We need to know that when we get faith, it, it comes from our hope. We need to know that our faith tells us about our future, that faith pleases God, and that our faith is priceless. God, today as a church, we desire for you to strengthen our faith. Your word says that you'll take us from glory to glory and from faith to faith. I declare that every person will be able to experience another level of your faith the faith of God in this year. Speak to us individually, Lord, even as we start this fast. Thank you, Father God, that we will begin to hope for some things. That know there's nothing outside of the scope of what you want to provide for us. But we have to believe you without doubt. God, I break off fear to believe you, God. And I thank you, Father, that we will walk in faith like never before. We walk by faith and not by sight. If you're in this room right now and you've never put your faith in Jesus Christ, if you've never put your trust in him, today is your amazing opportunity to do that. I'm so excited because this was the single greatest decision of my life. To say, you know what? I'm not going to do it myself. I'm not going to live this life alone. I'm going to live this life in constant relationship with the one who sacrificed everything for me. That even though I didn't acknowledge it, he died on the cross for my sin, for my mess ups, for my mistakes. And now he wants to help me live. But all I have to do is put my faith in God and receive it. There's grace like a flood available for every person in this room. I don't care how far you've messed up. I don't care how many mistakes you've made. I don't care how much stuff you've been doing behind closed doors. God's saying, I'm available, I'm here, and I'm ready to help you walk this out. But you have to receive it. Today, if you're in this place and you want to make the greatest decision of your life, <clears throat> you want to make Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior, I want you to pray this prayer 
in your heart with me, according to Romans 10, 9. It just tells us that if you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and you confess with your mouth, then you're saved. It's two easy steps. And if that's you, I want you to pray this prayer in your heart with me. I just want you to say, God, I need you. <laughs> I need you to come and change my life. I believe you sent your son, Jesus, to die for me. Today, I ask you to be Lord of my life. Come on, if you pray that in your heart, God knows. I don't have to know, but he knows. He searches the heart. He knows. Mean that with your heart. Say, I renounce sin, and I make you Lord of my life. Change me. Renew me. Transform me. I'm yours from this day forward. We pray you were blessed by today's message. If you'd like more info about our church, please visit us online at transformchurch.us.